डॉक्टर कानी मोजी एन वी एन सोमू हॉनरेबल चेयरमैन सर नाइन मिनट्स यस सर हॉनरेबल चेयरमैन सर आई एम वॉन्डरिंग द टाइमिंग ऑफ द डिस्कशन ऑन द इकोनॉमिक सिचुएशन इन द कंट्री In today's business, uh, Hindu business headlines, uh, we had a headline stating that Indian banks writes off uh, rupees 10.6 lakh crore in five years, and 50% of that is being linked to the large corporates. Uh, this is how the corporates gets their freebies. Is one thing which we have to make a note. The India's DGP crosses four trillion dollar for the first time. So there is no doubt the Indian economy is growing. India is set to outpace Japan and Germany shortly as the fastest growing economy in the country and the government also claims that the GST collections has touched a record high but always Tamil Nadu has got the brunt of not getting it back what we give it to the Indian government but the pertinent question of whether the fruits of the GDP growth has reached the India's poor and lower middle class no the government has failed miserably in managing the economy What is the use of boasting that India's foreign exchange reserves have increased? Indian economy grows faster than US economy with 7.6% GDP growth when 80% of the population is suffering in poverty. It's not a boon, it's a curse. US is 37.5 trillion economy with a population of 33 crore, but India's population is 142 crores. In terms of per capita GDP, India ranks 139th in the world. and india's external debt is 172 lakh crores india has witnessed a surge in private debt especially in the corporate and the household sectors due to the easy credit availability and low interest rate during the upa's 10 year rule only rupees 2.20 lakh crore was written off for a kind information as of now the indian banks have written off as rupees 10.6 lakh crore in the 5 years However this also possesses a risk of default and financial instability especially of the income growth slows down or the interest rates rise according to the reserve bank of india the total non financial sector debt was 167% of the gdp in march 2020 up to 151% in march 2016 india has a high level of income and wealth inequality which has increased over the time According to the World Inequality Database, the top 10% of income earners accounted for 56% of national income in 2019, up from 37% in 1980. Similarly, the top 10% of wealth holders owned 77% of total wealth in 2019, up from 66% in 2000. High inequality can lead to social unrest, political instability, and lower economic growth. unemployment rate has touched 10% the unemployment of youth aged between 18 to 25 is touched abnormally low to 25% only a very small percentage of people are lucky to get a regular employment in government and private companies sir more than 40 lakh government jobs are vacant and the government has promised to create 2 crore new jobs every year could not fill even 10 lakh vacant jobs too much emphasis on privatization of government and public sector companies will destroy the social structure of the country the reservation system followed in our country is indispensable for upholding social justice and removing inequality reservations are not provided any private sector and if the governments keep on privatizing the reservation system will derail and the social justice and equitable distribution of wealth is under threat Therefore I urge the government to introduce a bill to provide reservation in the private sector before it sells everything this government behaves like a good salesman but not a good samaritan the economic disparity and the social inequality is witnessing a worst phase in independent india when the world thrives on dollar economy the continuous fall in the value of indian rupee against us dollar can do a lot of bad than good my senior colleagues In treasury benches criticized vehemently the then government's failure to provide a stable rupee in 2013 you have promised to people of india that when you come to power you will stabilize the value of indian rupee against us dollar and bring the value of 1 us dollar to rupees 
What happened after your government captured the power in 2014 is a history known to everyone. A honorable finance minister has even said in public Indian law, rupees falling, only US dollar is raising. This is a candid statement accepting the failure of the government to stabilize the value of Indian rupee against the US dollar. Due to the extreme rupee dollar rate fluctuations, India's nominal GDP affects badly. The export gain is lost by a mile through import loss. The value of India's import is much higher than export. The widening gap in trade deficit is not good for any country. India is no exception. Our country's trade deficit with other countries, especially China, is going to affect the Indian economy very much. Too much dependence on imports from China will disturb the prospects of indigenous manufacturing and development. I think the warning bell is ringing. It's a wake-up call for the government to reduce the country's over-dependence on China in importing. Another time bomb of our country is facing at the moment is the escalating prices of the essential commodities and food items. The World Economic Forum predicts that the cost of living crisis sparkled by fluid and food price hikes will hit women the most. The rising prices have hit almost everyone, either it be a milkman, a fish vendor, an auto or a taxi driver or the pensioners. All are affected very badly, but the union government is still having a blind eye to the precarious situation in the country right now it is in. Transportation cost has gone up by 20 to 30 percent due to the steep hike in the prices of petrol, diesel and CNG. It is causing a ripple effect on the vegetable prices. The steep hike in the CNG prices had made life miserable for the auto and cab drivers. CNG is now sold over Rs 69 per kg. We demand the government should provide Rs 35 per kg subsidy on the CNG so that they can survive. The agriculture sector is a backbone of a country. Nearly 70% of the total population thrives on agriculture and agro-based activities. The government once claimed that it will double the farmer's income as done too little to save the life of the farmers of this country. The increasing incident of farmers committing suicide is a national shame. The government should address the needs of the farmers as a top priority because the whole country depends on them. If the government can't stop its farmers committing suicide, if the government can't uphold social justice and socio-economic equality, if the government cannot control the escalating prices of essential commodities, if the government can't provide unemployment opportunities for one-third of its youth population, if the government can't provide affordable health care to its poor citizens, there is no point in boasting that our country is the fastest growing economy in the world. Sir, among the Indian states, Tamil Nadu is the second largest economy and third largest exporting state, contributing 9% to the India's net exports. Under the dynamic leadership of our Honorable Chief Minister through M.K. Stalin, the Industries Department of Government of Tamil Nadu is taking several proactive measures as several foreign companies interested in signing agreement with TITCO, an industrial arm of the Government of Tamil Nadu. In Tamil Nadu, 179 projects at a cost of Rs 8.6 lakh crore relating to Tamil Nadu has been included in the National Infrastructure Pipeline. These projects will be implemented in the next five years. Thus, Tamil Nadu is emerging fast as a champion economy and advanced industrial state in the country. I urge the government to allocate adequate funds and to provide all necessary support to Tamil Nadu to release an unprecedented growth and pinnacle of success in economic growth, industrial development and employment generation. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Kanimojiji.